she's gonna go to sleep dreaming of potatoes. She is. Just 95, it is not 95. It's actually about, oh, I don't know, 80 degrees. Good morning, beautiful people. All right, so since we have some nice cloud cover, I don't know if it'll hold out. We were supposed to get some rain today. I don't think we will, but in the meantime, I'm gonna do something that I've wanted to do since I got this thing. I am going to try making a giant compost pile. I don't really actually have a lot of vegetation just like easily grabbable by hand. So I'm gonna put the grapple on this and I'll explain some of the ingredients I'm using in the compost pile. I don't know if I have enough stuff to make a nice compost pile, but we'll see. I can at least uh, clear out some vegetation. So I'm gonna get going. So, first plant that I'm gonna tear out and compost is actually an interesting type of invasive plant. So, these are called paper mulberry. I had never seen these until we got out here to the south and they're everywhere. They, uh, they got introduced, most of this stuff got introduced about 100 years ago and it got out. Basically, how these really got out is someone brought a sterile plant as a landscape plant it was male and then someone also had a sterile female plant well they they put out runners root runners and the root runners come up and they don't stay sterile and so voila as you can see they are spreading quite far uh, i assume what happened is birds perching on the farmhouse roof they planted them we don't really need them here they uh they're getting to the point where they're so large that they're gonna start tearing up the roof of the farmhouse. So this is actually, there's some cool stuff with this plant. It's a uh, milky white, you can probably see that. If you're into plant medicine at all, this is right up there. You can use this for you know bug stings, ant bites, stuff like that. I've used it, it will make mosquito bites quit itching as bad, that's just me. As it is YouTube, uh, it is a sticky subject talking about plant medicine. I will say this makes a great animal food if your animals will eat it. This plant is anywhere from 16 to 20 percent protein which is really good for a plant it's really really high in magnesium i think phosphorus a couple other trace minerals it's honestly it's a really cool plant for all the things that it does and it will grow in the absolute most garbage of soils which right here pretty garbage soil so all that to say high protein protein converts into nitrogen plus all of the trace elements this is primo compost material right here. So I'm gonna use a whole bunch of this. This will be the first thing I grab. I'm gonna see if I can grab it with the grapple. I have a feeling I'm gonna to have to go get the chainsaw and drop them first before I can pick them up, but that'd be okay. It's really not gonna hurt any of this stand to take some of this out. We don't really want it here. The cow won't eat it, which is a bummer. Chickens, they'll kind of eat it, but the pigs love it. I'm gonna quit talking and get grabbing. All right, that little bit, I think that's good to start with. That would have taken me hours to do by hand. And it kind of looks mangled, but now I can get in there easily with a chainsaw and cut the rest out. This stuff is so prolific. Any of it that I have cut out comes back with a vengeance. So I'm not real worried about that. I'm more worried about this. Lots of 
free vegetation that'll just keep coming back. I'm gonna leave that pile there for now, and I'm gonna go down to Katsu Corner and see if I can get some Katsu, because that's the next thing on my list of hard-hitting greeneries that are great for compost. I am down here at the farthest corner of the property. This is what we call Katsu Corner. When we got to this property, the Katsu had made it all the way up to the driveway. Basically what we have now, there's about an eight foot drop down in there, down to where our culvert is that goes under the road. That's a big 60 inch culvert, it's huge. The original creek, <laughs> there's a huge story in there. Uh, basically what we found is when they put in, back in the 30s, when they swaled all of these properties around here, the bottoms, got turned into these giant gaping scars because of all the water being focused to one point, it can now cut trenches. What people did was they came in and they piled garbage in those trenches and then buried them so they could have, you know, the other half of their property back. A lot of this kutsu was brought in as erosion control and it got out, just like any other invasive species. But there is one good thing about, well, there's several good things about kutsu. Backup has arrived. Kutsu is a really interesting plant it, uh, it grows like none other. Like, honestly, some of these vines in here, I can come through, I can chop this off and mark it. And that vine by tomorrow will be there or further. Like this, if you've ever seen the movie Jumanji with the vines, I think they modeled that plant after Kutsu. It is the fastest growing plant I've ever seen. I'm pretty sure it's a nitrogen fixer, but that's not, not what I'm after. The leaves and the vines. This plant makes one of the best animal fodders around. Actually, I'm pretty sure there's a guy out here called the Kutsu King or something like that. He's a farmer who figured out that uh, Kutsu's around like 21% protein and you can exclusively graze your cattle on it. And he has formulas for how much Kutsu you need per how many cows and it's pretty cool stuff. What I'm after is all the minerals that this pulls up it would go great in compost so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to see how much of this i can grab it's kind of hard to grab vines but we'll see that grapple did a pretty good job grabbing those trees trees are really easier to pick up when they're laying down so we'll see if i can grab a whole bunch of this kutsu that'd be pretty cool turn the problem into a solution all right jack is here with the new and improved tank i want to say a huge thank you to janice for sending that you didn't have to send that that is going to serve us well that thing makes the uh the old hank look like a preschool toy. That made short work of that. I hate digging into kutsu by hand because you always find critters. Spiders that are like, you know, as big as your hand, stuff like that. Uh, I think this is enough between this and the trees. Hold on. Might as well while we're here. You know, there's some berry vines that were hiding in the kutsu. All right, we got a load. I think we'll put all the vines in there. Uh, we have to make sure we get this nice and wet and cover it with a tarp and get it to really start breaking down Because some of these As you can see those will put down roots. So I have to make sure these vines are good and dead. Otherwise I'm just transplanting not to say there's not cuts you already over there where we're building a compost pile, but we don't need more We're trying to deal with what we got already All of my materials are here. I think what's funny is it looked like a lot more when I was pulling it out. I think I'm going off of what it takes to make a compost pile by hand. Having all this piled up, it's like, whoa, that's not very much. So I'm gonna 
mix this with that. I don't know if I necessarily have enough brown in here. I figure with sticks and hard vines and stuff like that, it'll probably be okay. But now I gotta drag over a hose. We're gonna wet it while I just pick it up and turn it. I don't know how well it'll turn. Like I said, this is kind of an experiment. So we'll see if this works. This might be a pretty large fail. All right, Jack, you come spray while I mix. You're spraying. I'm gonna go grab the uh, little chainsaw. I'm gonna lop off the biggest woody bits and basically get the whole pile to kind of fit a little bit better. I think there's enough green in here. Once I cover this with a tarp, it'll start doing better. I will explain why I need a compost pile. I mean, everybody needs a compost pile, but I haven't had one really going on in a minute. And I'll explain why here in a second. Let me grab the chainsaw and get this done. All right, while I'm waiting for Corbin to grab me a tarp for this, we're just about done. One of the reasons I need a compost pile and I need it started just to add to, I thought about doing this like an 18 day compost. I have a giant turning machine, so it wouldn't be a big deal, but I just need some sort of compost pile, period. Because as stuff starts coming out of the garden, instead of just feeding our, our you know garden scraps to the pigs like we have been doing, because we got amendments this year, we are actually going to make sure we compost that stuff. That is one way to make your amendments go even farther is whatever is in the plant, because you figure like a cabbage, you only eat the head, the rest of the plant's still there. So if you pull that up and just throw it out, whatever amendments are left that that plant used end right there. So part of the reason you compost is any nutrition, any amendments, anything good that you add to your com your uh, your garden, try to reclaim it any way you can. And so one of the ways that we're doing that is by composting. So now, anytime we go and crop out something, we have a whole bunch of lettuce and some cabbages that we've harvested, stuff that we really need to get out so we can get the beds started again with something else, hence the compost pile. So now that we've got this started, we're gonna tarp it. That's probably enough water. There's water pooling up underneath. We'll get this tarped up and check back probably tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna go inside and peel off this shirt and put on something dry. It is too hot to be outside now. Are you ready to go outside and dig potatoes? Tables. Tables. All right, so it is getting on up towards a little person bedtime. <laughs> And it's finally starting to cool down. Got a little bit warm out there. It was, yeah, it was pretty warm today. It was rough. You're, uh, you're trying to finish something up, mm -hmm. and then you're going to come help mostly wrangle the baby. Yeah, and dig potatoes. And dig potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> All right, my little tater digger. Let's go outside and dig us some potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's dig right here. Go in the middle. Potatoes. Let's put them right here. Those are good sized potatoes. Nice russets. Ooh, there's some more buggy. You see those potatoes? No. Those are nice potatoes. Oh, here's another one. Another one. Dig it. Dig it? Oh, you're going to dig it? <laughs> He's digging them. Oh, look, here's some. Look at that one. That's a big one, Buggy. Big one. That's a big one, sister. Woohoo! Hoo-hoo! Hoo-hoo! Look. Big one. That's a big one. Tables. Tables. Did you see one down there? You did. You have an eagle eye for this. Boss lady coming in. You look all serious with your rubber boots carrying your. Well, they are out here. 
Got a tray. There's our pile. Hey, those are nice looking potatoes. You realize we're going to call them that for years. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah, isn't that a monster? That's a good one. Sweet. Oh, these are good tables. Those are good tables. And this one, she's like not oh, wanting to move. That table she loves the tables. Diggy. Diggy, you diggy them. Good job. Now that I have a camera, lady. Oh, you need a camera? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You go get it. Here. Right there. Get it. Good job. That's a good one. Big. Yeah, it is big a big one. one. There you go. Put them in there. Good job. Kill me. Good. Well, you don't have to throw it. Just do gentle. <laughs> There's one. There's one. Buggy, you're a good table digger. Table. <laughs> Pull it out. Pull it out. So I could probably do this a lot faster by myself or with the big boys. But she's gonna go to sleep dreaming of potatoes. She is. Take them off. Good. Good. There you go. Did you give up? You over it? Pick you some Mexican sunflowers. It's like, uh, it's like the 4th of July after you light off the last firework. It's like, that was so cool, but it's over. Yeah, but look at our hall. This is a fantastic hall for a 20 foot bed. Right? That's really good. I'm happy with this. I'm quite happy. We did a, what, couple 50 foot rows? Yeah. Last and year. I don't think we even got that much, did we? No, we didn't. And this was really an experiment. The red potatoes are what we had left from harvesting last year, so they were very small. That was all we had. And then the russets were actually, she's up there on the thing. The russets were actually from store-bought potatoes because and they, I, we couldn't get seed potatoes this year. Yeah, so. they did great. So before we end it, you wanna weigh them? Yes, all let's right. do it. What's your estimate? I don't know, that's like 15 pounds of potatoes cool. in there. Cool. Brett, That's a lot think? of potatoes. Uh, at least five pounds, maybe six. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, I'm hey, guessing hey. between 15 and 20. Stay off. You guys stay out of the way, baby. All right. Russets are... 21. 21, wow. And then the reds. 13. 13 yeah. pounds. So we got oh, 34. 34. 34 Sweet. pounds of potatoes. That's awesome. Really, this is one of the like funner things yeah. I've ever grown. Uh, them and sweet potatoes. Sweet yes. potatoes are really fun too. They are. Basically any crop that you dig up that... Right, it, you don't know until yeah, you... It's just that, did we score? Did we miss? Yeah. This year, for the size bed, we did great and for like not killing them or any of yeah, that like, we just we left, just them. left I, them i put some mulch on them not because i was thinking potatoes it was because i was worried about the plants drying out right. and i was you know you guys saw if you've been watching there is a pallet compost bin in what is now the pepper bed and i needed to get that stuff out of there so i just hauled it over and i put it over there on the potatoes so these are gonna cure we'll probably chuck them in the barn or something yeah we can go put them in the barn okay. maybe get a fan on them yeah just so they you know they go hang out with our garlic yeah they'll hang out with the garlic maybe if we're lucky they'll pick up some garlic <laughs> flavor. flavor there we go all right we're gonna go put these in the barn and mm -hmm. i think that'll do it for today yeah. all right we'll catch you guys on the next one bye